All right, good morning, Olive. I'm going to be in Psalm 32 if you want to grab your Bibles this morning and looking at the blessings that come from having our most important needs met. Psalm 32 is one of my favorite passages. It was actually my dad's uh, life verse, and I just love this passage. But we're going to be looking at our needs and how that man is blessed when his needs are met. Uh, if this virus, if this pandemic has revealed anything, it's that we are a needy people. We have some health needs right now where we need this virus blown out of our country and out of our world. Uh, we have some economic needs where people need to get back to work. Social needs where people desire to gather together. We, we know, if anything, that we're a needy people right now. But from Scripture, we can see that our most important need is actually met at the cross. I'm in Psalm 32 in verses 1 and 2. It says, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. Here David really talks about two different issues, a union and a communion, clean heart and clean hands, where us as believers, if we have entered into a relationship with Christ and if we've asked him to save us, God took his righteousness, he imputed or he gave us his righteousness in trade for our sins at the point of salvation. Well, that's that place of union. That's that clean heart, but not only that, we ought to have clean hands as believers, not only union, but communion, where we have a right relationship with God. And David has found himself in sin in Psalm 32, and actually that sin is weighing on him to the point where his bones are aching, as we see in verses 3 through 4. In verse 5, we see that then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover my iniquity. And we see the blessings that come from having David's biggest needs met. Look with me in verses 6 through 11 as we see the blessings that come from having our greatest need, our sin need, met at the foot of the cross. In verse 6, we see that a clean heart and clean hands lead to an untouchable life. In verse 6, Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while they may be found. Surely the rising mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. It says that we are untouchable when we have that basic and most important need met, that those rising waters can't even reach us or touch us. You guys probably remember the flood that happened just a few years ago and actually happened right here on this campus. I remember as the waters rose in Escambia and Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa County that night, they actually peeked over the foundation of my house and started to come into the, the house. I ran outside and opened our gate and let water rush out. But we know about those rising waters, especially during hurricane season around here. Well, we have some rising waters right now in our nation, in our world, and it can be scary. But it says that we are untouchable. Those rising waters will not reach us. Not only that, but it says that from trouble uh, we're protected and that we will, uh, he will surround me with songs of deliverance. We have a place of shelter. And as believers, when we have that sin need met, we have that place of shelter, but that place of shelter actually turns into a place of praise. Praise the Lord for the, the blessings that we find on having our sin need met. Well, not only do we have an untouchable life, but we have a supernatural leading. In verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with mine eye. It just last week from Psalm 123, I talked about how a servant looks to the hand of his master and looks and waits to respond based upon that movement. And yes, we look and we wait. But here in this passage, we don't look to the hand, but we look to the eye of God and wait for his leading. David here looks to God for counsel. And then from that, he's actually able to counsel others by the same counsel that he receives. We have an untouchable life. Uh, based on this blessing. We have a supernatural leading. And also in verse 9, we have a liberty and obedience. Verse 9 says, Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Man, when we don't walk in obedience, when we don't have that communion, uh, when we don't have that, that clean hands before the Lord, we lose out on that liberty that is found in obedience. And here the picture is used of a horse. Just a couple weeks ago, a member of my family had a horse where their horse actually got out of the barn. Not literally, but got out of the gate. Their horse actually got out overnight and just walked down the road. And that poor horse, he messed up his hooves and he was hurt. And they had to go find him and bring him back. But he found himself in danger as he left their property. Well, 
here in this passage, it says that don't be like that horse that has to be led, that has to have that bit. But we should have our desires when we are communion with the Lord. Our desires should match the Lord's desires. And that's where the desires of our heart are met. Well, not only is a liberty and obedience found from this passage, but also that the blessing that comes from having our sin forgiven in verse 10 is unfailing love. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Praise the Lord that even though woes, waters, difficulty is surrounding us, God's love never fails. And this takes us all the way back to verse 1. Why? Because blessed is that man whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is covered. God's unfailing love. And then finally, in verse 11, we see the laughter. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous, and sing. All you who are upright in heart. Y'all, we have a lot of needs right now, and that's obvious. And this pandemic has made that clear. But as believers, when we recognize that our primary need has been met by Christ, it leads to this untouchable life. It leads to supernatural leading. It leads to liberty and obedience. It leads to unfailing love. And then finally, laughter. We can rejoice and be glad. I am so thankful that as a six-year-old, I accepted Christ uh, in my sister's bedroom. She led me to Christ. And that union was started, that relationship was started with the Lord Jesus. But now daily I work on that communion so I can experience the blessings that can only be found from a walk with the Lord. So let me encourage you, if you're a child of God, you are blessed. No, no matter what goes on around us, no how difficult things may seem today, we are blessed because our sin has been taken care of. And man's most important need has been met. Let me encourage you, share that truth today. We may think that our most important need is the virus or our finances, but the reality is our most important need has been met at the cross. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. Lord, we rejoice and we are glad because of what you've done for us. Lord, like David, we are thankful for the blessings that come from following you, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice, Lord. We thank you for your leading. Lord, I pray for all those who are listening, Lord, that you would protect them. Lord, that you would meet their daily needs today, Lord, that you'd keep them safe. And Lord, I pray that soon we'd be able to gather back together here in this place. In Jesus' name, amen.